Hello again, I'm Dr. Nunez with Living Health. This is a series of videos on how lifestyle can impact your health and well-being. This is the area of medicine called lifestyle medicine. If you like these kinds of videos, press the thumbs up, press the subscribe, and press the little bell so you can be notified of further videos. Now in other videos I've spoken about the whole the different pillars of lifestyle medicine, six of them. And today I want to return to nutrition, which is one of the key pillars as well. In lifestyle medicine, we speak a lot about a whole food, plant predominant diet. So what does that mean? What does a whole food, plant predominant diet involve? Well, whole food means foods that are not highly processed. And plant predominant means mostly from the plant world. It doesn't mean that you have to be vegan or vegetarian or the like, but it does mean that we have extra emphasis on foods that come from plants. Okay, so what are the different groups here? Fruits, pretty much any fruit you can have and you can eat and you can try to include in your daily routine. You can have them in breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay, so, and what do we talk about whole food with respect to fruit? Is try to eat the whole fruit. Try not to squeeze it and juice it and filter it and then concentrate what is it you're basically doing there is concentrating the sugars in the fruit in, in the form of a juice. Yes, you can use the whole fruit and throw it into a blender and make it part of a smoothie. And, and that's, that's, that can be fine. But the idea that you take, for instance, an orange and you squeeze it and you just drink the orange juice, that can really spike the sugar content from that fruit. So it's best probably to not do that. And that's what we're talking about, whole food in the sense of fruit. Eat the fruit, don't process it excessively and enjoy it. Vegetables. What kinds of vegetables? Green leafy vegetables. You can eat in abundance. Um, you can have tomatoes, things like that. You can have tubers. Tubers are the root vegetables. Carrots, potatoes, uh, sweet potato, parsnips, those kinds of things. Now, as you eat your fruits and veggies, you're gonna find you're getting more fiber in your diet. And that is a good thing especially in, in our Western or more highly developed countries, we tend to eat very processed foods. And so our diets actually tend to be low in fiber. If there's one area that our nutrition is, is deficient in, is in fiber consumption. So as you put more emphasis on whole foods and a plant predominant diet, by eating fruits and veggies, you're gonna get uh, your fiber. And fiber also comes from beans, beans and legumes, like lentils and uh, all the whole world of beans, which are fiber rich and are also protein rich and, and they're lean. So these are very healthy things that you can do. Now, what other things are in the plant world? Yes, the grains are in the, in the plant world. You have to be careful with grains that you not, that you try to stick with the whole grains not highly processed grains that are then refined and fortified like many of the flowers and flower products that we tend to consume. Those tend to also drive up the calories in those foods. Those tend to take out the fiber that naturally exists in a whole grain. So you really wanna to stick to, to those whole grains, be they whole wheat, bran, millets, quick quinoa, those, those kinds of things. And there's an abundance of selection. You have to be a little careful with grains because they do tend to be calorie rich. So you wanna be sure that you're emphasizing more your, your other fruits and veggies, and then your grains you reduce somewhat. What other areas in the fruit and veggie world, in the plant world, that might be rich in calories? Well, avocados can be rich, they're oily. Anything that's oily can be rich in calories, even if it is plant-based. I will pause and say here that uh, one of the advantages of uh, being more plant predominant 
is plants don't make cholesterol. So any fats that you are getting from plants doesn't include any cholesterol. When you go into the animal world, animals do make cholesterol. Animal cells produce cholesterol. So you do have to start to be more careful with that. Having said that, oils, no matter if they are plant-based, are high in calories. And you should be a little cautious with in how you cook, that you're not deep frying things, even if you are using a vegetable oil or an olive oil or things like that. What other areas do you do you need to be careful with? Well, in, in a plant predominant program, we try to limit dairy, we try to limit um, eggs, we try to limit meats and poultry and even fish and seafood. Now, let me say also about that doesn't mean that you have to eliminate these things or that you have to go vegan or vegetarian or the like, but that you are prudent in, in your choices of those foods because they once you go into this world you have you're starting to get into higher fats higher cholesterol contents and the like and you want to make sure you're not filling up on those things and you're eating more from the plant world what's the advantage of going with the plant world you're getting that extra fiber you're getting nutrients that your body needs and all of this fiber and uh and wonderful food is crowding out your eating the bad stuff. So it may be easier for you then to maintain your weight. You, you'll be, have a healthier digestive system as you get older and uh, you'll feel more energetic and lighter usually. So when you're talking about uh, the meat world, be careful. In the seafood, yes, the fish, that can work. Try not to do fried fish. Try not to do breaded and fried fish like fish sticks because now you're adding highly processed stuff and you're adding oils to it that you really don't need. Within the seafood world, things that do have cholesterol, oysters, shrimp, and lobster. So be, be careful with that if you're going to pursue those things. And again, if you're in plant predominant, if you're filling up on fruits and veggies, you probably will have less of an appetite for those things. And yes, the, the thing you should consume least of is going to be those red meats that are very rich, fatty, and high in cholesterol. So if you limit those, uh, you'll see great improvements in your health. Why do we say this? There's a lot of evidence that chronic illness is impacted by your nutrition, your nutritional habits. 80% in fact of chronic illness is impacted by your lifestyle. And a big component of lifestyle, one of these big pillars, is this component of nutrition that we're speaking of. Don't ignore the other pillars either. Make sure you're getting some exercise, make sure you're getting enough rest, um, make sure you're avoiding bad things like tobacco, and make sure you're maintaining some great social contacts, some loving relationships, and make sure you're not uh, stressing too much. Stress less, love more. Those are also parts of lifestyle medicine. So until next time, I'm Dr. Nunez with Living Health. Bye-bye.